What's going on out there, Junkie Nation? This is GQ, and we are sitting here on the set of Game the Podcast. Before we jump into the topic, I want to remind everybody to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to culturejunkies.net, leave your comments on some of those great articles, and also for this video, leave your comments and let us know what's right, what you like, what you didn't like, and also what you would like us to talk about. So, we're going to jump right in, and we're going to introduce our great panel. Got another new member on the panel, but we're, before we jump to him, we're going to talk to the old friend, uh, Simon Says. How you doing, man? Simon Says, I am not that old, but, you know, I, 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 I do take an, a, an occasional dip in Lazarus Pool. That's why I look so uh, so distinguishedly Fair young. Fair enough. As long as you don't come out rabbit and all crazy and, and laughing and throwing Talia back over the cliff and... Oh, that other crazy. Then again, you know, if you, matter of fact, send Tally over this way, but we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get over to that. We'll yeah, get yeah. to that later. <laughs> and our new member, we've known this man for a, quite a while, but he's new to game. Professor Dex, how you doing? Hey, yo. Doing pretty good. Yourself? I'm doing good, man. Glad to finally have you sitting here in the studio recording, doing game podcasts, because this is awesome. It would have been nice if I had started the timer, but that's all right, though. We just spitballing. We're letting things go. So, right to the topic. The man himself, we've all grown up watching his movies. None of us are older than the character, thankfully, because I kind of hate to be that old. But James Bond... Great character, spy. Ian Fleming's one of his best creations that I can think of. And he's been, you know, around for goodness. We're looking at his 40, I'm sorry, not 40, 52nd anniversary coming up somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, I mean, the character's been around for it. No, I take that back. That's probably just from the movies. The character's probably even a, a year or two before that. Didn't he, like, start off like a book or a novel before yeah, he did the article? Series of novels. Yeah, yeah, series of novels, but I think he, uh, the first appearance in, in written form was in Playboy, if I remember correctly. But, uh, so let's, let's get into it. I mean, because we got Spectre coming up, you know, end of uh, this year, closer to November, I guess. I'm looking forward to that. Cause, like, 24th movie, is it, or is it are we past the 24th? Are we at the 25th? 24th? Ooh, it must be close to that. Oh. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, this is Bond 24. Yeah, this is, yeah, Spectre. They finally brought in the evil organization. But before man, we get into about time. any of that, yeah. we're going to let my man Professor Dex get this conversation started. How did you first get introduced to the James Bond character? Oh, wow, that's going back a ways. Uh, like almost everybody else through the movies, but I actually took a uh, hiatus over to the novels. I read all of the Bond novels. This is back in middle school. Okay. And to be honest, a lot of it went right over my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of it. You know, yeah. Very oh, yeah. Books oh, yeah. For an adult audience. In fact, it was um, the books that really led to the movies being successful, obviously. But when uh, John F. Kennedy actually uh, had an interview... And they asked him what was his favorite book. And it was one of the, I think it was Dr. No. Okay. And almost overnight, everybody started running out and grabbing oh, yeah. these books. John F. Kennedy was an extremely influential guy. I mean, he, I mean, probably going to get crucified for this, but mm -hmm. I mean, Obama in, in some slight ways has a lot of similarities because he lets himself kind of, you know, do like the Jimmy Kimmel show and stuff like that. That's something that I would kind of imagine John F. Kennedy being a younger president, you know, would have done as well. But didn't mean to cut you off. Go right ahead. Right, and that's where it uh, really took off. And uh, you're probably aware of Thunderball. Oh, yeah. And how that was actually remade. Yeah, it's unofficial remake. Right, right. <laughs> never say never again. Still yeah. one of my guilty pleasures. That, that movie was awesome. Look, here's the thing. Honestly, now I was introduced to Bond through a couple of different ways. Obviously, TBS Superstation used to run those ridiculous Bond marathons like over and over and over again. And that was yeah. cool. The problem was I was always catching the Roger Moore films and that was <laughs> pissing me off. Because yeah. it was just like, who? Because like, you know, I had two older brothers and they were into Sean Connery. So it was like, who is this? Like, this is James Bond? This is like, what's so great about him? Let me go back to Transformers and watch some Transformers cartoons. But my Dad finally took me, because um, Never Say Never Again came out in theaters, so he took me to the theater to go see that. That was my introduction to Sean Connery's version of James Bond. Now, obviously, of course, you know, as a kid, you don't know that it's an unofficial, you don't know anything about the remake. You're just sitting there watching a movie. 
I love that movie. I was just sitting there like, oh my god, Barbara Carrera. I think her name was or whatever the. Oh, she, yeah. Patel, she was. Yeah, she was, she was hot. She I was, was like, oh my god, this damn. woman is gorgeous. This guy is old looking, but he's cool. <laughs> so, I mean, it was it was kind of cool. But I'm gonna turn it over to Simon Says, man. What's your first Bond memory? My first Bond memory, I would say, would be Octopussy, because uh, I was. It, it's funny though. I was. Uh, I was in. Elementary school. You liked that movie because you knew full well you weren't supposed to say that title out loud. <laughs> That's why you liked that movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but no. no, no it, 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 elementary school, go ahead. Uh, elementary school came on at the time. You know, we had the you know, HBO and all that stuff. And it came on HBO. I was like. Oh, he was one of the rich kids. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, premium <laughs> cable. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it came on HBO. I was like, dog, this dude is the man. Cause he, cause like, uh, there's one scene that I, I actually liked was, uh, the, when he was fighting the two twins, he knocked one twin out and he killed oh, the yeah. other one. Oh, that yeah. that on was the cool. Train. On the train. Yeah. On the train. The train. And, and he was riding, uh, I believe it was a uh, Mercedes Benz and he was in the tire. They shot the tires out. Mm -hmm. Kept going. He was on the, he was on the railroad tracks. I was like, dude, <laughs> the come on now. Improbable scene. He, I, I ain't gonna say that because Bond has done some crazy crazy yeah. stunts and getting away from stuff over the years yeah like the um one movie i'm sorry to bring this up but living daylights shot the tires out he's driving with uh, on the rims and he's cutting a hole in the ice i'm like hey come on now timothy dalton is an underrated bond because he, he is he is he is definitely underrated ruth hitless and the interesting thing about timothy dalton was he was a huge fan of the books and he wanted to bring that character to the movies yeah but the problem was you had this uh, literary character, but in the movie universe that had been created that Roger Moore had helped define. Uh. Very, a lot of humor, a lot of <laughs> silly slapstick. And the character didn't quite, there was a, kind of a dissonance there. And, uh, and actually going back to Thunderball, interesting uh, trivia note is that the man who made, who actually has the rights to Thunderball mm -hmm. and who took that and made uh, Never Say Never, Never Again, yep. He was actually the person who Ian Fleming originally brought the novels to. Oh, okay. And he read through the novels, and he thought, these are great. These will make great movies, but the character of Bond himself will have to go. And he actually sat down and rewrote the entire character of Bond. Oh, and he wow. turned Bond from this cold, ruthless, misogynistic killer mm -hmm. into this much warmer, more approachable uh, guy with the quips and the jokes oh, and everything cool. and the much more elegant. Yeah, that's what um, that's what I think that um, was it Piers Brighton's and his character was like, he was so, he was like all into the uh, sexual in the windows right. more the than the one-liners. Yeah. 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 He took yeah. it back. Quick cool one-liners. And you know what's funny though? Um, I would take your what you said, GQ, about your dad taking you to go see the Sean Connery. My dad actually told me that the, you know, about when I was growing up, he said like the, the best Bond is Sean Connery. Oh yeah. And then um, for a lot it, of people, it, it's always been Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they said he defined the role. I mean, it's it, it's kind of cheating because he was the first one that everybody really got to see, mm -hmm. minus. Um, that TV movie? The TV movie, the Casino Royale, the kind of the, the interpretation of that. Bond yeah. was an American CIA agent. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Jimmy Bond, exactly. Minus that version, Sean Connery, obviously, for most people, was the first one that they saw. Because Dr. No, like you said, John F. Kennedy kind of endorsed it, basically. And, um, you know, that was everybody's kind of introduction to Bond. Now, Daniel Craig has been able to kind of bring it closer to where the books were. Because his Bond is not quite as ruthless as Timothy Dalton's was. But sometimes he seems like he is he's because he's very he's thing. very single minded. It's like the mission, the mission, the mission, and I don't know to decide too. Yeah. An interesting thing that the uh, the producer who rewrote Bond's character said this character won't really work on the screen, and you know he knew his audience at the time. I'm sure he was right. Yeah. But we've actually reached a point now where things have gotten so dark and realistic oh, yeah. that yeah, that character actually does work on the screen. Dude, That's Superman what? destroys cities while fighting. Back in the day, that would have never happened. Yeah. So it's much darker world, much you know darker tone, and We're people. Saying, uh, have, it fits right in with the recent trend of reboots like uh, the Batman with the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. It's much more in line with that. But. Yeah, the, yeah it's, a, it's a much darker audience out there. And it's, so, you know. I'm going to bring up the, the actual um, cat, or, or, or I can't really say it, but the uh, proverbial, like, uh, whatever you want to say. Room. Yeah, say yeah. Um, 
Money Penny in the at the, at the last uh, end of uh, Spectre or not Spectre, but um, Skyfall. Skyfall. Yeah. Um, I I was kind of shocked about that. I mean, at the end of the movie, I was like, okay, where's a leadness? Oh my God, that's Money Penny. I, I like, but see, I, I like did like that. Did, I like how they did that because they played around with even the thought of bringing her in early in Casino Royale. Because when uh, Ava Green's character uh, Vesper sits down and inter you know introduces herself, mm -hmm. he's like, "I'm the money." He's like, "Yeah, every penny of it." So that's uh -huh. when you first sit in there, you're like. Are they really bringing money penny in? Is this like this, this, this chick that yeah. you know looking all good? And this is like, oh well, no, okay, they're they're doing this and doing this, and then finally Skyfall comes around, and it's like, wow, we actually get some of her backstory. This is, yeah. this is pretty cool. Actually, and then um, that's the same thing. On that, I only guessed who she was because they they specifically did not say her name, and that well, made yeah. me to kind of guess where that was going. And then the and the coolest thing is that um, they actually decided to go with the male version of M. Rather than the female, kept the female well, version. I'm that sorry. was Judy Dench owned that. Yes, yeah, she role did. She for, did for what was that? Twenty years, basically. I don't know if it was that long, but yeah, Nin no, yeah, was... yeah ninety-five to two thousand fifteen. Well, no, I'm sorry, it, Skyfall it, came out what two thousand fourteen or thirteen? Just thirteen. Okay, so almost yeah, almost twenty years of having that role. So in, I'm sorry, I from the moment I saw her in Goldeneye, and she yeah. just outright told him was <laughs> like, "You're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur." I could care less if you go out there and die, but I'm not going to send you out there to die on a whim. I don't care about it. I was just like, she's awesome. I'm like, this is like, I gotta say, I think it was, wasn't it in the next movie when uh, he breaks into, no, 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 no. This is uh, the Daniel Craig. Yeah, the Daniel Craig, yeah. into her room and yeah. is about to say her name and she's just instantly, you know, finish that sentence and I'll have you killed. Right. I'm like, <laughs> she was, I'm like, dude, if I had to roll into a dark alley with an old woman, Judy Dench all day long. In her M character, because I'm sure she's probably a really nice woman. When they actually were going to recast everybody in Bond, they, they sort of looked at her and thought, you know what, we would be crazy to Right, it's like her. she owned it. I'm like, and I used to watch her on this show um, from the BBC, and one of the, as a matter of fact, there was an admiral that was in one of the other Bond movies, we used to play her husband on the show. I can't remember the name of the show, but I was like, not she's Downton Abbey, man. No, 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 not no, I'm kidding. You're not watching that, man. Uh, turn, turn your own mic down after that one. Oh, it's just like, I can't remember the name of the show, but it was a cool show. Either way it goes, great actress, owned the M role for like almost 20 years. So, I mean, that, you know, tipped my head off to her because that was, she did a great job with that character. And then, you know, to see Ray, uh, Ray Fiennes, come in and, t and I hope he stays because it might not too. be one of those yeah we got it for Skyfall but we got to recast him because he didn't feel like doing no, like no you're M so you better stay there and, and do your job he actually uh, looks the, it's funny though he looks the role to play M yeah. he is very M much, very much I loved how they uh, actually have kind of brought it around to where the series originally started though yeah, yeah. with Money Penny with them uh, everything just all in place even they even um actually brought back a new cue. They on um, the I can't remember the guy's name, but he actually right. He's a little different. Though. Yeah, he's a little different. Um, he very different actually. Kind of is his tone in Skyfall was kind of like not not off as like a he was more pompous than the original Q. Well, no, see, I think it was just it, it represents a changing of the times. It's like Bond back in the 60s and 70s was like you needed a spy out there for espionage and go kill the assassinate the guy and whatever now it's like man i can sit at home and and hack into his bank records and pretty much finish this dude off like at home and he even <laughs> says it's like look i can do more damage you know sipping earl gray in my pajamas than you can in like a year so i was like He's actually right. I mean, it's like James Bond as the character, the old way is almost, you know, it's, it's kind of, you don't it's need it nowadays. One of the themes of Skyfall, you know, is this uh, outmoded. Yeah. But, uh, no, there will always be a need for heroes like Bond. Oh, yeah. I'm not, no, 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 I'm not saying there's not a need for it. I'm saying the, the, the way Q looked at it, you know, and, that, and I think I like how they're building that relationship. It's like Q is a computer nerd all day, every day. And Bond, obviously, is that rugged, out-in-the-field agent. I like having the opportunity, since it's such a young guy playing Q, to, you know, really see that it's like, you know what, um, I don't really get you. But, you know, so now you can build that relationship between the two of them. Right. It's like, look, right. we're not, we're not, yeah. we're not friends. Pins. Yeah, it was like, we're not exploding pins and crocodile yeah. suit things anymore, you know, and jetpacks. Yeah. Right. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. And again, I know he retired. 
but I still wanted the old guy at Skyfall Ranch to be Sean Connery. <laughs> if they could have... Yeah, that would have been... A Brinks it. truck... No, they didn't offer it oh, to him did. right. They should have grabbed... Ooh, they should have just yeah, yeah. asked Disney for a loan just to get <laughs> that role for Connery. Man, get you a... The theater would have exploded with excitement if yeah. Sean Connery... You just hear his voice, and he's like... Oh, you decided to come back to the match. That would have been freaking <laughs> awesome. Just I, to have. I I agree with you because uh, <laughs> I think it was like me, you, and um, Kinshiro went down to go see oh, it. Oh yeah. And I I think if if that would have happened, I would have. Do my pants. The crowd the would have been. It, it, the theater would have been on their feet. Heck yeah. yeah. That would have been if they could have. Oh. Sean, we know you said you retired. We know it was about five years ago you retired. Here's. A quarter of a billion dollars. Just come back for two days' work. That's all we need. Two days' work, and 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 we're good. Man, that movie would have made twice what Avengers made if that if it was just had that cameo. That would have been awesome. Now, so, what about uh, Christoph Waltz? I think is in the new one. Who is? Wait, now hold on. Who is he playing? Because I I yeah. I haven't been paying a ton of attention to Spectre because I don't like being the, spoiled on the movies. The speculation is that he will be playing Unstoppable Blofeld. I could see that. That is awesome. And I oh, think is um, Batista's in a uh, Star Trek con thing. They're kind of denying it because they oh. want everyone to be surprised. But everyone kind of everybody knows. kind of knows. It's like really, you got him. Uh, German dude, he play, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's probably playing a German dude. Yeah. So yeah, I, that, that makes sense. I, I like that. Uh, I don't know, Batista better be in this. Th well, no, you know what? He's the, he's supposed to be like I, I'm. For now, I'm assuming he might be his right hand. Yeah, I can deal with that because character. you know what? I got to give Batista his credit. I mean, was he boring as hell in Man of the Iron Fist? Yes. yes but so was everybody else in that movie. Was he awesome in Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes, because he played Drax just so cool. It was like just himself. Like, he played right, himself. exactly. It's like you could see him saying half of the stuff that Drax says. And so that was pretty cool. So, I mean, we're running a little bit low on time. The I know. The thing Spectre, though, is that uh, it's just interesting to me how I, and they're actually reinventing part of Bond's history that uh, Blofeld this time is going to be a figure from Bond's past. Which I think is pretty cool. I do like that aspect where, like you said, it's not just going to be this super evil organization because that's kind of old hat. I mean, it's like it you really can't... It really is. I kind of... Well, we're at the time, I guess, where it's just no longer that this can just be his job. You know, he just goes out and does this. Right. Now, it's the same thing what they did with Batman. Well, the Joker was the one who killed his parents. It has to be personal now. Yeah, it... it... <sighs> It works sometimes, but sometimes it's just one of those weird, it's like, why'd you do that type mm -hmm. of things? So, I mean, again, we're going to obviously all be in the theater sitting there watching it at the same time. So we'll all get to, you know, experience it at the same time. But I'm hoping that it's not just something that they just, you know, threw it in there right. for the sake of throwing it in there. It, it better have some cool, deep-rooted, you know, oh, wow, that's pretty neat. Okay, cool. Substance. It, right, exactly. It's like, you know, this is the guy that used to babysit you back when you was in diapers. You know, uh, you know if it's something... Like that, I'll be kind of mad. Martinis out of a bottle. Right, exactly. <laughs> if it's something that, like goofy like that, then I'll be like, uh, whatever. But if it's like, you know, you find out maybe he's the guy that, you know, Bond's parents died in that quote unquote climbing accident because of him, then you're getting back to the Batman thing. You're but, right. you know, it's like, it better be something really worth you know, making it, you know, a point of contention or whatever. Because well, it I think I wanted to bring up, uh, right where, where do you stand on the uh, rumors that Idris Elba will be the next James Bond? I have no problem with that. I don't either. It's the rest of the, well, no, I That's take that back. Not even so much the rest the of the world. world. It's the rest of middle America right. that yeah, probably has the biggest problem yeah. with that. Because Idris in on that show, Luther, you know. He was great. He's a great, he plays the character really well. He obviously has the accent because he's from England. So it's like, I have no real problem with him doing it. Now, where I do kind of have an issue is kind of the same issue with um, with Pierce. It's like, he's a little bit too old now. Yeah, maybe. It's, it, that's kind of the you only problem the, I have. He's like, you got the gray, gray, gray beard going on. The right, and, beard. And that, I mean, like, look what happened with Denzel. You took one bad picture and it's like you're all over the internet, <laughs> you know, and people, and like nobody noticed. Denzel was almost ageless until that photo came around. So, I mean, 
there's it, with black actors there's not a lot of black actors that have that kind of sex appeal charisma smoothness about them that are in their you know mid to late 30s it, there just aren't you know i'm sorry it's, i don't want to dog the guy but anthony mackie is not going to be james bond chadwick boseman is not going to be james bond you know what i'm saying it's like those guys just they're they don't, they don't have it your old guard was Denzel and Idris, basically. And unfortunately, for the Bond character, especially the way Daniel Craig has kind of, not so much redefined him, but the way Daniel Craig plays him, mm. that's what people are going to expect now. That r chase you and beat you down and, you know, kill you, like, you know, hand to hand or whatever it takes. I don't really see a 50 plus year old Idris doing that yeah. by the time they're ready to, you know, start shooting with him. Because who knows if Spectre does outstanding. They're probably going to be throwing a bucket load of money at Craig to probably stay on for another one or two. No doubt. No and then you know, now you're looking at a 55-year-old Idris Elba who doesn't want to be in Marvel movies, I don't think, anymore. Hmm. But that's a rumor. Ahead. All right, guys, last thoughts real quick. What is your favorite Bond movie, Simon Says? Go. Simon Says, uh, my favorite Bond movie is... I'm going to still say Octopussy. That was my favorite. That was my first one. You uh, just I, like saying the word. I do, I do. All right, and Professor Dex, favorite Bond movie? Real quick, man, what is it? Probably GoldenEye, actually. Uh -oh. Toss-up between GoldenEye and Casino Royale. The, the obviously, the, not the remake, but you yeah, know, the yeah, Daniel Craig the version. One, yeah. Yes. Okay, fair enough. And you guys will just have to wait and see what my favorite one is, because it might be coming up on a future episode of Game. You but, know what? Um, just on a quick note. Okay. Um, I will be doing a uh, top five James Bond um, theme music. Uh oh! So that will be coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. So very cool. Look, oh. look out for that. Oh yeah, very look cool. Look at it. Simon says with the cheap pop, plucking himself. That's all right. So for Simon says for the new member. Professor Dex. This is GQ. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what your favorite James Bond movie was, favorite James Bond moment, favorite James Bond girl. Because you know full well there's been over 24 yeah, of them. Really. We've got a lot to pick from. So, and eh, except, real quick trivia note Maude Adams, I believe her name was, played a Bond girl twice. She was in Man with the Golden Gun. And she was also in Octopussy, yep, Simon Says' his favorite movie. Yep. So, we're going to leave you guys with that, marinate on that for a little while, then put it on the grill. But this is GQ. This is the end of this podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Come back every week for more game. Game over. Culture Junkies!